going on, everybody? This is Anthony Goods, assistant coach at Arkansas State, but I'm still here scouting the NBA. I just finished charting over 880 of Steph Curry's threes last year. We're gonna dive into the statistics. I literally went through every single shot and coded them myself, cause I'm trying to find out what can turn the greatest shooter in the world into an average shooter. If you've been watching this channel, you know I've been talking a lot about early high hand closeouts, but do early high hand closeouts truly bother Stephen Curry? The data surprised me, but let's break it down. On no contest threes, Steph shot 48% on the season. Some of these included flybys and some were just wide open threes, but there's no surprise he was able to make these at a high rate. The urgency to contest a Steph Curry three-pointer is obviously high, but he's still able to get some of these uncontested shots. Along with the other shooters in this study, around 15 to 17% of his three-point shots were uncontested on the season. If Steph Curry's on the floor, you definitely want to get a contest, so let's see how he shot on late contested shots. On the late contest, Steph shot 39%. The majority of his shots on the season had a late hand contest. Steph saw defenders of all different heights. And as I mentioned, I also tagged the proximity of the defender. Tight proximity was within four feet, moderate was four to six, and six and above was a loose proximity. Regardless of proximity though, if you had a late hand contest and Steph had a clear look at the rim, it didn't really bother him. Now let's check out what he shot with an early high hand contest. And this is where we see Steph is not really human. On the season, Steph shot an impressive 36% with the early high hand contest. His percentage dropped, but not by much. You'll see in the rest of the video how crazy this number is, but we can look at it from this perspective. An early high hand can take the greatest shooter in the world down to an average three point shooter. Of course he's Steph, so he made some jaw dropping shots with an early high hand contest, but what really bothers Steph wasn't the early high hand by itself. It was who the hand belonged to and the proximity of their contest. Against defenders in that 6'6 six, six to 6'9 six, range, especially wings with length, his efficiency dipped way lower. But against smaller guards, they were cooked. And even against true bigs, unless they were there on time, he still found clean looks. For Curry, wings in that 6'6 six, six to 6'9 six, range were the toughest defenders. Now let's talk about the difference of Steph shooting on the move versus shooting stationary. What was interesting about Stephen Curry is he shot about the same off the move as he did with his stationary catch and shoot attempts. Only about 10% of his shots were stationary catch and shoots, but he shot them at a 41% clip. With a player with such high usage and importance to his team, it's rare that he gets these standing opportunities to shoot the ball. What Steph is known for is his movement off the ball. On movement shots, Steph shot 41% from three as well, but this accounted for 36.5% of his shots. Steph's movement off the ball has been a staple of Golden State's offense and it reflects in his shooting numbers. What's also interesting is Bob McKillop noted that Steph led the NBA in screens off the ball. Everyone talks about his three-point shooting. Yeah, he shot 40% from three this year, but he made 59% of his layups. 59% of his layups, 93% of his foul shots. And this year he led the NBA in screens off the ball. 1,086 screens off the ball. Being able to shoot the ball on the move like this obviously takes great mechanics, but let's not forget about the fatigue factor. Steph has to be in elite shape to shoot the ball at 41% while also attracting as much attention as he does. And as a primary ball handler, Steph shoots 50% of his shots off the dribble. Shot difficulty increases off the dribble, but he was able to shoot 37% on dribble attempts last year. The range and ease that he's able to get these off dribble attempts off has always been impressive. And it's even more impressive that he's able to shoot above league average on these shots. Lastly, I track shots where the defense forced Steph into an extra action. Now this could be a pump fake, a step back, a jab step, or any kind of a hesitation. He shot 33% on these type of shots, but this only accounted for 3% of his shots. So again, having the proximity and the pressure to force him out of a rhythm shot is always the best measure against Steph Curry. 
and you don't just want to fly by and leave him open you want to stay in proximity to make a second effort to contest the shot as well so if you're looking at all the numbers combined if you want to drop steph curry to an average or below average shooter you definitely need to be in close proximity have an early high hand and if possible force them into an extra action that's the only way you're going to force them into that 33 to 36 percent range which is actually a good percentage for some shooters but again we're talking about the greatest shooter in the world but that's it for the steph curry breakdown please go check out some of the previous videos to see how stephen curry's number stacks up with some of the other elite shooters in the nba but i'm anthony goods i'm signing off and i'll catch y'all in the next video appreciate y'all